I'm open. 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 Welcome to another episode of the I'm Open podcast with Joe, Sam, Ryan, and Andrew. Like, what if I said yeah. that every time? We probably then, should start saying yeah, that more often. Maybe I'll too. say that every time. <laughs> it's it's so unclear of, who we are. <laughs> I know. <laughs> sounded kind of official. I don't know. Um. Welcome to the podcast. We are recording on a Tuesday evening following Club Nationals. Mm-hmm. Um, lots to go over there. Uh, and on top of that, we took to Twitter to get some hot takes from people. And a lot of them came in there. They weren't super hot, but they were, you know, fun to discuss. So we'll go over those. Um we reached out to, to Molly Brown to see if anyone wanted to come on. They were like, no. <laughs> so, uh, you know Ouch. what? That was the first time, like, someone's been like, no, I don't want to, like, be, be part your of podcast. your stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, a little bit of a reality check there, but um, understood, understood. Um, but, yeah, yep. congrats to Molly Brown as well as uh, Bravo and Mixtape for their mm-hmm their big wins yeah indeed um i feel like i've got a couple things to say but i don't know if i want to like just off the cuff or if we want to talk about how our draft went and then maybe it it'll naturally kind of come up i don't know where you guys oh, are I would, at, but i would love to talk about how our yeah. draft went yeah <laughs> well, why don't we do that and see where only we go one who wants to All yeah right. if any, yeah if anyone followed uh our draft we did of the teams at club nationals uh, we each put in thirty dollars and drafted uh twelve teams each, and then we earned money based on how well they did. So, I earned sixty one dollars and ten cents. Joe earned twenty seven dollars and fifty cents. Remember, we invested thirty dollars. Yep. So Joe lost. <laughs> so Joe lost two fifty. I lost two fifty. Fifty. <laughs> uh, Ryan, good. Ryan lost eleven fifty. Brutal. But you still owe me. You still owe me that. <laughs> and then Andrew on, lost seventeen dollars and ten cents, and I won thirty-one dollars and ten cents. So Jeez. things are looking good over here. Um, yeah, got a shout out. Uh, Bravo and exists for both way out, way breaking seed into the finals for me. So yeah. that was huge. You had noise as well, right? Yeah, noise also super broke seed. I had them as well. Yeah, I had both teams in the mixed final, and I had a team in each of the open and women's finals. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, shout out and, Molly Brown for you know upset. making me yeah. not lose more money than I was going to. Um, sorry you hate us so much, but thanks for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for winning the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, it's it's funny. I don't know, like in hindsight, I want to say I would have like done something differently, like I would have strategized my picks better. But how could you really prepare? Like it yeah. wound up being like some of the teams that went kind of middle of the pack just did super fucking well. Um, yeah, would have been hard. Did, to. Looking do. back, we did. Uh, we slept on mixtape. I think they should have been like, obviously, like they were seated super low, but they should have. Yeah been arguably like the first overall pick or one of the first few at least yeah Yeah. why were they why were they seated so low they just had didn't have a great regular season that's Um, crazy i mean they won the wucs but yeah winning winning worlds doesn't count as like (laughs) the regular season so like that's crazy it's, it's stupid yeah that's crazy um yeah i saw someone like commented on that video saying like mixtape should have gone one and I was, I was like, no, I think they went in like a good spot because they were seated five and like people were going to pick <laughs> things ahead of them. And then like in hindsight, I'm like, that person was so right. Like <laughs> they yeah. could have just as easily been the first pick, you know, and you could have just been justified as that as any of the other teams. So totally. Yeah. yeah. I was texting, I was texting Josh about the draft and he was like, he didn't watch it, but he was like, did, did mixtape go first or did someone pick someone before them was his like the way he phrased it to me so he was like assuming mixtape would have gone first yeah like as much as as much as mixtape like played great 
I kind of feel like Fury was the right one overall pick. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Like in retrospect, for me, like my thought isn't I should have taken mixtape higher. It was I should have just fucking punted it on mixed and like tried to get more open and women's teams that were more likely to make it because like yes like mixtape one and like that would have been a great pick but everything outside of that was like so up in the air See, yeah there were a lot of upsets i feel like i punted on mixed and i regret that like in hindsight i i went really top heavy with my uh open division and that 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 bit me in the ass like so hard like taking ring and a pony sound like on paper it sounded good but i think maybe i should have spread it out i think i should have just like taken the coin flip like either ring or pony one of these is gonna do do me good and then let me get like a high seed in another division so i kind of spread spread it out that's kind of what i wish i did but obviously also got you got super fucked that pony ring and truck were all on the same side of the bracket right and like how how i don't know but yeah, like if 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 everything went to plan, then Ring wouldn't have been playing truck in the like right, whatever right. round they you know. So um you can't really like you, you're gonna assume that the team is gonna win their pool, you know, the second mm-hmm. the second seeded team in the tournament. Yeah. So it is what I it think, is. I think the big story in the open division is just like truck was clearly the number one seed. And Bravo just went on a run on Saturday and Sunday to just sh- like they showed up and they played and they played their game and it w- it worked like yep. they were having fun. I think Bravo was the most fun team to watch this weekend. Um, did you guys see the story arc between Leandro Marks and Alex Atkins with some injury celebrations? Yes, <laughs> that was that. awesome. I did not. So I didn't see Leandro Marks. Oh God. So w- there's these tweets out there, but basically in the Rhino uh, Bravo game, Landro marks like catches a score. Right. And he like, like holds his hammy, like his he, hammy, like, like pulls his hammy. Right. And then like slowly, slowly gets better. And then like, like twerks his butt a little bit and everyone <laughs> cheers. Right. And mm-hmm. then on Sunday in the finals, Alex Atkins catches a hammer and he goes down. Like he like, like hurt his knee or something. And the announcers are like, Oh, Alex Atkins injured on the play. And then he slowly turns that into a twerk. It was, great. <laughs> Hell yeah. it was amazing. It was, it was, it's, a, yeah. it's, if you want to see the Atkins one, uh, we retweeted it. So just go to our Twitter feed. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, yeah. I guess that kind of brings me into what I, I guess my thoughts were on the final. I thought it was a really interesting matchup, the the way it played out, Bravo versus Truck, because Truck, um, I don't know if any of you watched the um uh the like Ulti World post game press conference after the semis, but uh Rowan was talking and he was like, Yeah, we don't even practice huck. We don't practice reading the disc because we don't practice hucking, you know like and they they huck sometimes they what i noticed about truck this year is that they would really only they would have a design deep play if there was a bad pull if there was a pull that was out of bounds and i think part of why they obviously they beat pony the second time too but i think that's part of why they beat pony the pro champs was because pony's pulling was really bad and then truck would just like you know have this really sick design play but all that to say is that they have this really disciplined offense and they really don't like putting it deep bravo on the other hand is just like you know, they're a big play offense, you know, and I saw someone on Twitter say something like they looked like they were playing like an AUDL team out there, you know, mm-hmm. um, which was just such a contrast to truck. And when they got truck like off their game and just their game was just clicking, it was just like, that was it. You know, truck couldn't catch up because they weren't really yeah. willing to, you know, kind of play that more Huck based game versus Bravo. It was like a big, um, it wasn't like, it was calculated though. Right. Like they knew it, there was a lot of trust and they kind of knew their, their teammates like athletic ability. So they would make these kind of insane hucks, but it would be like right where their guy could get it. You know, they were just executing super well. Um, and yeah, they ran away with that final. It was crazy to watch. And you know, if truck couldn't win, I was rooting for truck, but if truck couldn't win, I was, I'm happy it's Bravo, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. Cause we've talked, we've talked, we've had a couple of those guys on the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we know a couple of those dudes and Ryan's a big summit guy. So um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was um, overall really sick nationals to watch, but um, agreed. Yeah. I mean, also on that Huck thing, like 
I honestly feel like half, like way more than half of the time I saw a huck go up, it was their D line. Um, yeah. Well, on the breeze, they have to huck it right, or else, like if they stop for even a second, like the coach will call timeout and they're they're out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's a different. That's a huge difference between breeze and and truck is that yeah, like the defense can just call a timeout and then put on the O line right. in the ADL. Um, but uh, yeah, they that, that I think that. <laughs> That would help Chuck out a lot, right? If they could have, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe they, m- maybe they could have come back a little better. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, they, um, like, I don't think, I don't think they had enough chances to, um, like their offense got broken more times than they had break chances, right? So I don't think they could have caught up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and credit to Bravo's O line D for like really stepping up. Um, and that's part of, that's just kind of the X factor of having Alex Atkins. Like that dude was going up and getting it. Like he had yeah, some sick keys. Um, he was putting it, yeah, he was all over the place. So yeah, my um, favorite, uh, play from nationals entirely was Alex Atkins skying Joe white, uh, when Bravo played machine and then just like holding it out at him. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, hell yeah. That was nuts. He was the one um, who he pitched us up doing a podcast, right, Ryan? He has pitched that to everyone he could possibly think of. He pitches <laughs> it to the owners of the summit. He pitches he pitched it to Jonathan Nethercut. And Nethercut being Nethercut was just like, Yeah, let's do it. Like, like first episode, we just get super baked. Like we do it with like <laughs> hot ones, but it's but it's like but it's like something mm. this and that. We get higher and higher and higher. Um <laughs> Atkins is a hundred percent in on this, but he needs a, he needs a sponsorship from Starbuds. Uh, mm, so right. I don't know if this is if we'll do it with him. But... <laughs> no, we would That'd have to probably bring that. He could get that on his own because he's actually a good player, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um. Do we want to? Is there? Any, does anyone have any last thoughts on the open division? And we could t- we could touch on the other ones too. Uh, there was a play, and I I hope it gets on Twitter soon. But I was watching it live. I can't. Remember, I think it had to have been Bravo Saturday morning, maybe. I don't know. They threw it deep to Quinn Finer, and he was like sandwiched, and he just. Ro- I think it was. I don't remember which team it was against, but he just roofed people, and I was like, that was the that was the catch of the tournament. That was unbelievable. Um, Quinn Finer, I think, has slept on in the frisbee community. He's definitely one of the top players right now. Oh yeah, big time. Um, um, yeah, should we move on to uh, women's? Touch on that a bit. We've got so we had the the upset Molly Brown over Fury. Um, yeah, which was this was the only division I didn't. My team didn't win, so big bummer there. Um, but no, I I loved um. I'll talk about specifically the the brute squad fury semi. I thought that was a really good game. Wait, brute beat. Sorry. Oh yeah, brute beat Phoenix before right the fury by one. They kind of had like a uh, a gauntlet to go through, which I guess is fair. They're the six seeds, so like oh, they including Molly Brown in their pool. Right. Yeah, that's tough. I feel like if they had, you know, a higher seed, they could have could have taken it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's also it's kind of something we didn't really talk. I mean, we touched on it, but I mean, yeah, the, the way uh, I feel like your your path in the bracket, you know, what side you were on had a lot to do with how far you went in some cases. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you know, specifically, I'm I'm thinking back to Bravo. I know we moved on from that, but um, you know, they 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 still earned it totally. I don't want to mm-hmm. detract from that at all. But um, yeah, I'm trying to pull up um in the final. What was that like one play that got all the um? Oh yeah, the, I know, I know what you're talking about. In the was, in the mixed final or in the women's final? Yeah, the, the women's, women's final. final. It was that the, D. Was it the layout D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was um coach layout too, right? Yeah, that was insane. That was that was disgusting. Um, that was that was maybe the D of the tournament. Just when you factor in like oh, yeah. the, mo- the moment and the situation, um, 
yeah, that was just the just the uh, vision to be able to make a play like that. Valeria Cardenas. Yeah. 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 Here, <laughs> I found a good uh, good tweet to share it. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. Oh, you love a no sound highlight. Oh, oh, yeah. Eesh. That's so sick. The second angle is so good too. Yeah, just like changing entirely, changing direction. Right there. Yeah. That's, oh, that's so, so sick. good. Yeah, that was nasty. Yeah, and that's. Yeah, I mean, I I want to, I like if if you're the thrower, how do you? like it, the, the that looks wide open until it's not mm-hmm. you know um like that that's not a play that like happens very often you know so i don't even want to fault the thrower too much it was just like in, insane totally. um really really high iq um play right there um yeah i don't know anything else we're gonna talk about mixed there was a lot of um man there, there, there's a lot there's a lot we've kind of glossed over i feel like but um that we uh I don't know when I want to bring stuff like this up, but there were some calls um, just by some Seattle teams in general that people were kind of getting annoyed about. Um, <laughs> not not to not to detract from mixtapes accomplishments either. Like I think you know their yeah, win was yeah. also well deserved. But um, yeah, I don't know. Did you guys see any of that? Have any thoughts on that? I did see a tweet uh, earlier today that was a picture of Emerald Seattle, Emerald City uh winning the spirit award at us open and, and the tweet was like not all seattle teams <laughs> <laughs> so they're definitely uh, aware of the uh the sort of rep they have yeah i don't but i mean there, know. Are, there are gross calls all over it's it's right it's yeah be like it happens I don't want to pretend like it's it's just a it's a Seattle thing, you know. I saw one tweet that was ridiculous. It was like at this point USA you needs to step in because it's clearly a you know, <laughs> like I I, yeah. I don't know if they're telling their play all their players, you know, to do it on purpose, you know, systemically <laughs> up there, but this is like you it's like what is USA you gonna fucking do? Like what are you talking about? Like stop. <laughs> stop. Everyone everyone makes shitty calls, like yeah. You know, I th- I think it's people like to pile it on, like point the finger, and you know, um, and uh, you know it's tough to like have all your shit filmed, and everyone can have an opinion and scrutinize like all these plays mm-hmm. at nationals, and it's like, you know, totally. I-, I think a lot of the folks who are being really critical, you know, I've made bad calls that I'm glad weren't filmed, you know, like I'm sure, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, shout out to mixtape. Shout out to exist for like way overperforming. Um, good luck trying to make them next year, Sam. <laughs> I know it's like it's fucking bullshit. I was like <laughs> trying to move here, trying to make a good team. It's like okay, well, I can't make Pony obviously, but like here's a national level team that's not like crazy. And then they just go and you know almost win the whole thing. So hey, you Fuck can put me, them I over guess. the you can put them over the top. <laughs> that's your selling right point it's like yo y'all lost like <laughs> <laughs> i've never lost a club <laughs> national final in my entire career so. sam yeah. you could easily make pony i mean you you have the in with their head coach that's true he was on our uh our most recent documentary release uh please <laughs> watch who is jimmy mickle at ring of the 69 for 69 film on our youtube channel check it out and uh one second and uh and uh you should also buy this t-shirt on our merch store Mm -hmm. (laughs) look at that um about your you know from your favorite documentary who wouldn't who wouldn't want to wear this (laughs) look all the look all those colors I know there's so it's many ridiculous amounts. Look, so this one you can get in five XL. <laughs> I didn't know they made three XL, but <laughs> not in large. Yeah, that's it though. That's it. Though. I didn't know they made shirts that big. So you <laughs> gotta awesome. you gotta look around for a color that might have your size. This one's five and two XL. So <laughs> you know, sometimes it's tough out there, but <laughs> sometimes I get a double XL and it shrinks a lot, and I you know it works. There you go. Um, yeah um oh one thing i i I haven't said anything to you guys about this but um i was getting in the dms 
late night, uh, I guess Saturday night before the, the finals with a certain player who had a game in the finals the next day and they were heated. They were heated about the level of contact in some of the games at nationals. Um, mm. And uh, I noticed some other players voicing that on Twitter. People are um, a little concerned about player safety these days. Um, and I guess it kind of ties into like our talk about bad calls and stuff, but um, I thought that was interesting. Just coming from like the players themselves, people are a little, um, you know, I don't know. Was I think... it, sorry, was it more like at the referees or like, or like, I guess the observers, or was it more just at like the amount of willingness people are to, to make a bad bid? Yeah, it was more the latter. It was um just about the level of contact that was just happening in general. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. Maybe there there's some sort of, but I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe this is like every year. This is something people talk about. I don't really know. Uh, it's the first mm-hmm. time I really keyed into it, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, um with that being said, we uh we posted on Twitter today about any like uh, hot takes, and I did notice a bunch of the replies did. Uh, like correlate with having referees versus having just observers. Do we want to. We you. We you. Do we want to go alert. Some of the <laughs> some of the replies. We we reached out to you on Twitter to ask for your <laughs> boldest frisbee takes, and we got a lot of replies. Yeah, here we go. Let's. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's happening? Bears Patriots. Shout out Bears. The oh, Bears. Yeah, the Bears won. Yeah, I don't know why that's from last night like that's old news um okay yeah let's, take a look let's dig into these. some let's do some it. hot takes uh nice. should i just go in order yeah, yeah. we should just react to them yeah audl field this is from thanos big fan of the pod <laughs> audl field should be the width of club plus maybe 10 yards maybe some sort of inside kick rule i want to i think that's onside kicks that's but um, <laughs> that's inside <laughs> so audl field being excessively wide there's some there's some truth to that i i would say yeah mm. uh, um i, I don't I wouldn't know. hate i wouldn't hate a shrinking but yeah it might get confusing i don't know well here's Wait. my thing like I'd- yeah, I don't I think, think I've heard anybody give like a really good explanation for why the AUDL field should be super wide. Like I've heard, oh. <laughs> I've heard lots of people who are like fine with it. And I've heard way more people who are like defense is way too hard. Why is the field so wide? Yeah. I, I totally disagree with this take. Um, Watching club like Thursday, Friday, and then I was out of town Saturday, Sunday. But watching club, and also, um, we had so we have somebody in my office who played for double wide, so we had a bunch of people in the office who know nothing about frisbee, uh, watched like the club streamed games, and like everyone was bored, everyone didn't like one main issue was just the amount of time between points, but like mm-hmm. just seeing so many dink and dunks at high level, like if you make an ADL field as wide as a club field, it's going to transition to what the club Frisbee looks like, which I don't think is as entertaining as the AUDL. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I wasn't, I'm really into Frisbee. So I really enjoyed watching club. And I actually, I felt like I was eating some of my words a little bit, like before club really started. And when we were watching AUDL, I was all like, you know, clubs boring club sucks like AUDL is better and I think this changed my mind a little bit but Ryan I'm glad that you kind of had that perspective of like your co-workers were bored like (laughs) I think that's fair to consider too I think if we want to make defense better in the AUDL I like having other rule changes like a backcourt thing Mm. before an inside kick or inside kick. Yeah. I think, okay, look, if you're not into the two pointer, you got to be for some kind of onside pull. Inside thing. kick. Inside yeah, totally. kick. Inside pull. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you have to kick it. Like, <laughs> that'd be interesting. But no, I think to. that that sort of is the key to unlocking like this game. Cause yeah. 
you need you need that comeback mechanism everyone we've talked to talks about it you know mm-hmm. yeah anyway thanks for yeah thanks thanos thank you As, thanos. i do want to also say that like <clears throat> field with isn't something i feel like the most strongly about or even like super strongly about but i don't know i don't feel like a wider field makes it impossible to do like dink and dunk type offense i feel like that like honestly might make it easier at sometimes yeah yeah but it it opens up like downfield looks more so that they're like a little more true like attractive than a a dink and duck i think yeah it's it's way harder to defend the break side when it's that big you just throw yeah. it out there like instead you... of dinking it you just like blade to the there. right to the to the break side yeah. yeah more more space allows more just like egregiously like i'm saying the Six word plates. dumb but like yeah just like people that can throw like 60 yard blade flicks or hammers or scubers like having a wider field allows that space to throw into versus having a tight field. Like you kind of have yeah. to dink and dunk. Like you don't really see any like risky throws in club because like the field is so much smaller that space is easier to co- to like cover. Yeah. Right. Cause I think throwing at the end of the day is like what the, the coolest thing about the sport is like to someone new. Cause to the, to a person who's not like a fucking weirdo who plays ultimate frisbee like a frisbee is something you like barely can throw you know and like don't know how to like do anything and there are these people just like throwing it upside down like throwing it however right. they want um yeah definitely kind of encouraging that is i can see the the argument for the width there uh we got one from friend of the pod nunez very, very great thrower is overhyped I think okay. this is a a meta, um, a meta hot take, <laughs> sort of like a Mad Lib fill in the blank, yeah. So that people will get mad. Who's uh, who in your mind came? Who do you think he's implying here? Jimmy Mickle. Jimmy Mickle, of course. Okay. And I watched Jimmy Mickle this weekend, and I was like, God damn, he's really good. <laughs> yeah, he's really good. <laughs> who is that? Great thrower over hype. I think you could you could throw in a bunch of names there. Like blank is over hyped. Like Jimmy Mickle had, I think it was in the pony truck game where he had a backhand like straight down the field over the defender upwind oh. like 70 yards. And I was just like, how do you physically do that? Mine would just blade into the grass. The thing for yeah. me was like also the 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 uh cutter was running full speed. And it just hit him like in stride, like it went over his head and then floated in front of him, and then like he caught it in stride. Like it was Stupid. probably the most insane throw I've ever seen. Anyway, anyway, moving on to Josh's hot take. Josh says I should be my school center handler. Parentheses I started handling in June. Cold take. I've been, I've been uh, saying it since June. I think, Josh yeah, should everyone, be the handler. Everyone, everyone yeah. agrees with this. This is kind of like uh, this he isn't just, he just said this anymore. for likes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout I'll out like shout out his, his his handle four nats and cats I'm shout it out that's I'm a very handler that's that's a very his school center handler kind of handle you know yeah yep <laughs> never a shapiro <laughs> says crap rangoon it's all hot, right that's a hot take that's a hot take <laughs> i disagree with this wholeheartedly <laughs> oh god yeah, you got to look at both <laughs> sides of that. And then, uh, okay, here's our... This one is 29 likes, which is more than our tweet, which is rude. <laughs> but, um, Ratioed. <laughs> this, was, this was Ryan's segue. I got 30 likes, Jesus. Um, it's not bold at all, but important games on the national slash elite level should all be refed. There's no way players can make objective calls in those situations. Yep. Thoughts? Yeah, it seems like a popular take. I've heard it echoed throughout, um, you know, this the the year, and I I agree for for a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean, first, like, yeah, I think it's hard for players to um, make objective calls. I think, you know, like guys, come on, like we're we're making some trash calls, and every when everything's being filmed, like, do you want your bad call to be like put on replay over and over, <laughs> and then to get flamed on Twitter, like? is that what you want you know and then also it just takes forever like watching these games and watching the discussion i think it's bad for the sport for our like espn game to have like 
these ticky tack like arguments and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm all for refs. I think the ADL, like you can criticize them for a lot of things, but I think the refs keep the game moving. So good take. Yeah. I would agree with that. I think yeah. like, even if you're as objective as you can possibly be, you might just not know, like from your perspective, you might've really thought it was a foul. And then like, from everybody else's perspective, it wasn't. And like, it sucks that you call it a foul. And, you know, if you're the only person, but you truly believe it, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we should get an impartial person in there. So the conversation doesn't have to take forever. Yeah. So I don't want to go like too long on this point, but it's like, what's the solution? Cause we already have observers who is like, when we're talking about non-partial, like that's the point of them being there. Um, is the solution that we're all in agreement for is that like we should just have people calling all the fouls and that players shouldn't be able to make any calls whatsoever? Well, the yeah, ABL I think, um, isn't even necessarily at that level because they – No, yeah, they, they do. They make active foul calls. No, in but the, right, in the ADL, only... the players are also allowed to make calls Right, too. right. I, Not, think, yeah. I think that would never – that would never leave – ultimate right like the sort of spirit like i did this wrong i made a foul, foul. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i think having like the observers are already there have them like proactively call fouls and make judgments and then the players can disagree or the players can make their own calls or whatever but like it's it would be faster and it would be a little less like because Every sport you watch, people will complain about the refs, but at least the refs are like impartial when they make mistakes, you know, instead of like, I'm literally on this team making a mistake, you know? Yeah. And, and I think, I think the key word for me here is national slash elite levels. And I'm, I'm talking like mm. games that are on film mostly, you know, I think at the youth level, um, you know, just for like logistical purposes and just for, you know, my thinking back to my own personal experience when I started playing Frisbee, like um, I think having to confront your opponent and discuss a call, I think was really like healthy um, and it wasn't really present in a lot of other sports. And that kind of made me like want to play Frisbee. It's um, like that was cool. But I think, you know, it, it's it's at this top level where, you know, the competition's really heated and stuff. And I'm watching TV and I'm a spectator and like we got to keep it going, y'all. Um, so, yeah. I think that's a key component of that statement. Totally. But yeah. yeah I, I, mean, I, li I like the way the ADL does it. They send like, they send observers out for like, you know, games to go and film games and like just making those the ref games would be, I think the right call. You know, it's kind of fucked though. The only thing that an observer, like the only active call, like an observer does is like, if you say a bad word, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like they don't call fouls but if you say or if you f, if, if you, you say celebrate too early and and run onto the field <laughs> yeah, like yeah if they can do that if they can tell me not to say the f word they can make a foul call like come on yeah <laughs> let's just make it so if you make a call the, the the defender can say contest and it goes straight to the observer or they can say no contest and then you know what to do with it let's just stop with the conversation that takes forever yeah yeah all right, moving on. Uh, we have JM Rallo, crown emoji, who skied Jabron Miser way back when. Wow. Wait, wait. Hi, go over his name again. It's, it's something about All Star in his description. Just hover. STF? I don't know. Head don't coach. Know. Two, two time ACL club member. That's rough. That sucks. Oh, man. <laughs> Head coach of Masai Ultimate. Oh, that's where um, Charlie went. Charlie Hops. Oh, nice. I believe. Um, then this Nunez, friend of the pod, replied with this video uh, where Jabron says that Nunez guide him and that Jabron lost in what looks like some sort of summer league game. So congrats, Nunez, on the sky. Huge. And the win. Um, Jabron do some box jumps in the gym. Me and Joe met him at a 
at the Empire Celebration yeah. Party, and we can yeah. we can attest he didn't look like super muscular at all. Like he, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Put in some work, Jabron. Come on. Yeah, come on. Um, <laughs> next, if you take steps after you catch, you must return to the first point of ground contact after the catch and ground check the disc. I'm not a fan of the one yard passes that gain five yards after the catch. I love this take. I don't like this take. I hate no. this take. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I hate this because look, okay. So the rule is that you have to be actively slowing down and you can take more steps than I, I, I just think of how like herky jerky and how much this like disrupts the game. And you can call if, if you see someone like taking those extra call a travel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's already something in yeah. place that will make them go back. If you think it's egregious, if they're not actually slowing down. I, well, I this, this fully eliminates power position from the equation. <laughs> yeah. I'm at, like when, when I first started right. playing, like you kind of right. have to break this thing mentally of like, you're used to basketball and you can't like, you know, catch and slow down. You know what I mean? And you have to kind of teach that to people sometimes. And this is, this is not how I want the game to be. I don't, I don't like this take very much. I, I love, I like, go ahead, Joe. I like understand not being a fan of the one yard pass that gains five yards but like yeah this rule doesn't this rule doesn't like affect that as much as it does affect like you know every other single normal catch that you're mm. moving for that you have to move back for or you have to try to like stop on a dime and like like one of my two like major injuries was like after i caught the disc and i was slowing down and like chopping my feet to try to like stop quicker and I like right. turned my ankle and, and rolled my ankle and like I don't know I don't I don't feel like people should be trying to like catch it and stopping it as quickly as possible so they can go back the last couple yards and tap it back in yeah that's, yeah, that's totally that is bad for your knees um as soon as Sam said power position I was like ah nope I'm wrong yeah I was I was kind of like Ryan what are you what are you doing man this takes away like I I you was know, so like narrow, point, narrow, yeah. like thinking about the one yard passes and just like, I just have like, whenever I think of that, I remember when I played Ruger that one summer and I don't know if Sammy remember this, but like Mac little, like he would, he would literally that we would be playing a zone and he would catch it in the zone and then and take three steps through the, through the cup. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> like, that's so like, I get it, but it's so stupid. And then like, it's travel. Call. That's a travel. It you is a travel. Slowing. Yeah. But people that's don't call it. Is- yeah, people don't call um yeah, okay. Like I think um what I will say about this, what I do agree with is the spirit behind this. I am annoyed by the how people kind of abuse that a little bit. And you kind of don't want to be the person like calling tiki tack travels all the time. That like I feel like that's a bad yeah. look, but pe- people take advantage of that too much. And like I, watching club nationals, like I one of my just takeaways from it is like the best players are traveling. Like a decent amount. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. want to name names, but like I, I, I remember seeing very many players who I'm like, that is a re- very good, respected player, and they traveled a fuck ton. Like, <laughs> so it's kind yeah. of annoying, and and you people use it to gain an advantage, and that should stop. But I don't know what I. I think there's a better solution, but I don't think yeah. this is it. But I'm with you, Ty. I, I'm with you. I'm. I, I think we're all like with the frustration of like the one yard pass there just needs to be a better solution and like maybe mm-hmm. travel calls need to like be maybe more... a ref. Yeah. Maybe a ref. Oh, a ref then forces a 10 yard penalty. I love the 10 yard penalty in AUD. Yep. Mm. That's the answer right there. All right, Sasha. All mm. I'm going to say is Jeff Babbitt has never skied me. That tweet has more likes than our tweet. That's a factual statement. Got to give it another one. That's yeah. yeah, that's true. I agree. I agree with the stake. <laughs> I, where's I the lie? I think that's fair. Where's the lie? Okay. All right. We got Daniel. A team can reject an observer ruling a certain number of times a game. If an observer rules that a foul, the player can reject that ruling and goes back to contest it or whatever. Maybe it costs a timeout like challenges. I, this I, is a tough one. I love the creativity. I actually, I, I think this is exactly what I wanted people to come up with. Like, I think it's really creative. I think it's Wait, cool. Is this, is the notion like to be spirited or to be unspirited? Cause like, what if you're like, okay, the ref calls a foul. So now instead of like, you know, going back, it's a, like an 80 yard huck completion. 
but instead of like like i don't know i could see this being this rule like being abused like okay when should we use our observer yeah. overturn yeah right. let's foul this guy into i think it incentivizes intentionally fouling people yeah <laughs> and like which is not good <laughs> the point of observers is to be impartial so why would you want to like i know observers make mistakes if, when we played florida like back into i remember <laughs> seeing those mistakes multiple times but like the point of don't get me started is like to be impartial <laughs> so. yeah i think um how yeah i i think if it's like you can block the player from sending it to the observer like maybe maybe there's something there um but i don't know i i think it uh i think it's it a little dicey yeah, who, gets to, who gets who gets to use this uh, rejection? Like, why couldn't both teams like? Why couldn't the first team be like, "I reject the observer," and the second team is like, "I reject your objection." Yeah, no. Of this yeah. this this tweet got me thinking. Like, what if there were like three branches of government in every <laughs> every ultimate game? And so you've got sort of like the player branch and the observer branch, and then maybe like the coach branch. <laughs> and so like the players can agree on something but then the coach has to sign off on it but if the coach disagrees the observer can overrule it <laughs> it also just sounds like the game is just now even slower that's what i was yeah. gonna say too is like we already have enough bullshitting and talking about calls like this this goes in into the direction that i really don't yeah just let, let me play to go. my reject card <laughs> <laughs> everyone has like a reverse card in their pocket I'm a, and ima- okay. imagine that Imagine that being in the South College Southeast regionals. Oh, like, you would get punched. People, in the face. people would kill each other. Um, I my think hot, my hot I, take. Go no, ahead. you go, you go, you go. Uh, I was just gonna say, um, I, I, I do like when we made this post. Um, like I know we we disagree with it, but like I'm, I, I'm super st- like that's one of my favorite ones so far. Just like this. Oh yeah. Thing crazy thing that like may or may not ever happen, but like we can just you know. And now let's get Thank to you for the post. one of my favorite ones. Yeah. Uh, this is from Jeremy Burrell on the Union. Just trying to meet Jay Cutler. Definitely on the Union. Sure. AUDL overtime should be college football style. Start at the five-yard mm. line, swapping possessions after every score, move back five yards after each successful checkpoint. Ooh, Bonus that's... rule, lose a player each round. Mm. so i don't know about like the fine print of like starting at the five moving five yards back um you know maybe there's another caveat of like starting at the 10 and moving 10 yards back and then like you're back at the like zero yard line faster but i love this college football style where it's like you know a shootout instead of just like that's cool a point like you gotta match the line's gotta match i like i mean college like football has has the best overtime and anyone who doesn't agree to that is just objectively wrong um yeah like the way it, it just makes the scores like inflate the further you go um <laughs> i think it would be cool i was i was definitely thinking about this one beforehand and like if it's just like you get one throw you know from the check-in mm. like you start at the five you get one throw then you move to the 10, you get one throw and so on. Um, right. What if, what if there was uh, no turnovers? So like if the disc is dropped or whatever, like that points over, right? And then the other team goes. So like you can't break. Instead of it being mm-hmm. like, oh, if the, the team breaks the first point, then the whole overtime's over. Right. It's more like college overtime, like if there's a turnover, it's I don't – in college, can you like get a pick six? Yeah, you can, but it would just mm-hmm. end it. It wouldn't okay. win. Wait, but it would, absolutely... it would. Yeah, you would win. It would just end the game. Ah, okay. How about in overtime, if you catch your D, you can just start sprinting. <laughs> I was literally that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, but, that would be awesome. Um, I I'm very excited by this idea because this is like this is something I could actually see happening, and like you know, we could we could go into the specifics of what the yardage is and whether or not you get more than one throw or whatever. I, but I, I think that's super cool. I want to see yeah. this now. Like, imagine imagine you're back and you get one throw and you're you're back at like midfield, and yeah. then like some someone makes an incredible like sky or something. Imagine the different plays that you could kind of draw <laughs> up from it. Right. Um, you could draw up some like 
intentional plays that look like a. I think you should get one Detroit throw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you should oh, get yeah, one totally. one throw. Uh, two two passes total. I think like one like setup throw and then one shot at the end zone. I think that would make it slightly more interesting. Mm-hmm. You could have like some kind of play with movement or something and. Yeah, but you would definitely see like intentional greatest and stuff. Yeah, that would that yeah. would be sick. Imagine um, the shit people would draw up. Oh my god, a one throw stall like twelve or something, and then yeah, you have everyone like just cutting constantly until like <laughs> yeah. just make one throw. That'd be so creative. Yeah, my uh, my next thought was, um, what if there's just like there's like six different ways to do overtime and you just they have to roll a die to like figure out which one they do (laughs) and like one of them's this one of them's like regular overtime one of them's like who can pull further (laughs) like one of them's just like a foot race (laughs) just um uh one of them is like the referee like throws the huck and then you just pick your player to yeah one v one (laughs) referee throws the huck (laughs) yeah some oh, bullshit <laughs> there's a lot of fun options there yeah here we go another one with a lot of likes i like this one earlier my bad oh it's that Maybe cock run impartial. guy yeah wait who yeah, is this? the cock run guy is this guy like a we should Gordon. only pay attention to this if this guy's a national champion oh, bravo Rob ultimate okay okay, oh, okay. Interesting. He's, formerly he's georgetown champion. law i i thought he went to a different college yeah didn't he go to tulane and like get like 15th at regionals <laughs> senior year or something um anyway chance of bravo ultimate says pro should be mixed and we've talked about this before we i think are all pretty much in favor of this obviously um i would understand a woman matching player and wanting to have a woman matching league but i would totally watch a mixed pro league that would be awesome have i mean i think the perfect Thing is to have three leagues kind of like how club is yeah that could totally happen um there is like an all-star eight on eight uh mixed which also eight on eight for mix makes so much sense it makes <laughs> like, so much more sense it makes so much yeah, fucking sense you don't have to like be like oh at this point we're gonna have four of these people yeah. and then at this point we're gonna have four of these like four and four every point i'm excited to watch that game at all-star yeah. weekend for sure is it on an AUDL field? I don't know. I would assume I so. I would assume so. Yeah, yeah they're probably cool. doing AUDL rules, but that I mean, Dude. that might just be the answer to like chances take. Like, watch that, see what happens. I think we're all like we have high hopes for it. So totally looks awesome. Who knows what do, happens in the future? And do do we think to some extent like adding an extra player, making it eight on eight, kind of solves that like width problem? That right. everyone kind of feels talking right. about. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, I I'm super into this. Um, and yeah, we said this before in the pod, but if they made a mixed pro league, I I would be through the moon. I think that'd be awesome. I think that's a really, really good take. Mm-hmm. How how wide are um WL and PUL fields? Do we know? They're the, it's they're the USA club. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think they're slightly longer. Oh, like go, uh, go super but... bloom go super bloom oh yeah big enough super, super bloom, bloom podcast now go san diego super bloom for now all right dick chang says 10 yard end zone instead of 20 yards eh, i mean i don't really like this to be honest but i think it could get ugly it could get ugly so, something i noticed was that a lot of the turns happened like at club nationals specifically, a lot of the turns happened on the end zone line. Um, right. I think that's kind of where, where it kind of evens out a little bit because you, the offense has less space to work with. And like maybe some of the end zone sets are starting to get a little predictable, but I don't know if it needs to be harder to score when you're like on the end zone line. Yeah. I agree. Mm. With and also that would just like almost get rid of Hucks completely. Yeah. It'd be hard yeah. To 10, 10 is tough. But you yeah. know what? I think Richard, I think 20, 20 as opposed to the the club twenty five is a good step. So maybe maybe go to fifteen. Let's meet in the middle with Richard. Okay. Um, I can see fifteen working, but um, point three. What I appreciate about this comment, what I appreciate about it, is that like 
I think it is really interesting to think about how changing the dimensions changes the play. And mm-hmm. I think that's a cool, that's, that's a cool thing to kind of consider. I don't know if I agree with like the exact number here, but right. like we could work with that. I think it's, I think it's an interesting idea. So yeah, like 10 yard end zone, you could, you could be guarding the front of the end zone and conceivably make a play on like something floaty to the back, you know, but 20 yards, you can't at all. Yeah. Um, that's true. So I don't know. We'll test it out at the Ringer, the Invitational. Yeah, for sure. All right, Anthony McLean says he's got two for us. Number one, USAU should have 20 bids to Club Nationals, so 16. Mm. And in observed games, carded fouls should require the player to get off the field for the point. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I kind of like that too. Because then what does it do? Like, okay, yeah, I just won't like... Yeah, I like that. I like that. I don't know I how I feel about twenty bids. I that's, that's I don't know. If there weren't twenty bids for college that year, we wouldn't have made it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm in different um, bids. How do how did these how did these players getting off the field work? Is that like uh is it like hockey where you you're playing down a person or is it like I think it would be know, like a sub squat. out in the middle of it. Off. I think it's like us uh, like assuming this person might be like in in the middle of like a confrontation or they might be mm-hmm. like hot headed or something. So just give mm-hmm. them a second to breathe and put someone fresh in there. And also, it it might like enforce people to like or you know make people not want to get hot headed if they think that you know punishment might correct infractions down the line. Like they won't right. want to right. fight or do something because they don't want to risk. Yeah, because you don't want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like that I th- one. I like that one. Yeah, I like it, and it's it's it just like it's an actual punishment for doing something like that. The observer <laughs> yeah, it's not just like card. And yeah. that's and that's color card. Every so, every other sport has this. Soccer has red cards or even yellow cards. Basketball, you can literally get ejected. Baseball, you can get thrown out. Like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So also with this with these twenty bids, does that mean sixteen teams make the make the bracket, and so there's no buys anymore? Probably. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the twenty bids, just because like the um level between there's I don't know I feel like there's I mean, maybe I maybe I'm proven wrong after like I don't know what was Bravo seated and what was eight yeah eight you know, yeah like the always was nine. But I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, like the the difference between like the really top teams, like you, you're you're gonna add four more teams that would get shat on by the top, you know. Six here's teams. my um, here's my my argument in favor. Um, so it, only sixteen teams make nationals. So for a lot of like competitive regionals teams now, it's it's sort of like you can you can join our team and we're going to be competitive regionals, or you can join the team that wins our region every year and go to nationals. And so there it's kind of tough for those sort of mid-level teams to make, to grow into that bigger thing when their players will just can just as easily try out for the other team and play for a nationals team. So like inviting more teams to nationals sort of gives people incentive to like, be like, Oh, this is my club team. I'm going to, grow this into one of those teams it gives yeah it gives those like teams of regionals that are you know almost there more of a chance Um, right and maybe yeah and maybe it keeps those like top teams from siphoning all the talent because everyone wants to go to nationals and this is the team that can go that makes sense i'm with i think i think that's a fair argument um in favor of that and then like like i mean if we're being real 10 to 16 at nationals probably isn't doing much of anything in the first place so no 10 to 20 that would be fine and then you know if you have a 16 team bracket it might make uh the second round more exciting because you know one team's not just like coming off rest they have to deal with a a bracket game you know yeah i'll watch more games so I'm yeah good with that. i would watch them good i like this guy's takes i like both i'm gonna give him a like hell yeah maybe a retweet too Oh, Ow. hit him with that live podcast retweet. Matt Bode. Hot take right here. 
Wow, I never X thought he would make player. a comeback. Turned poker player. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. He says he's making a comeback. Don't worry. Wow. I've, I've got his page pulled up. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's oh. on the cannons? Oh, and he yeah. played Flyers. Most recently on the cannons, but he's played in played for the Flyers, played in New York, played in Jacksonville. He was also good. He was also good Flyers teams. Make a comeback. I dare you. You know what? Damn, I he, dare you. I dare you. got a man. lot of D's. Look at all those blocks. That's a lot of blocks. I yeah. I dare you to dare you to make a comeback. Matt Bode, make a comeback. Come on the pod. Yeah, come come back on the pod. There we go. Jackson says everyone wears helmets and you play full tackle. This is an easy cold take. I don't know why we're not doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Let's just make let's just make frisbee football. Let's do it. <laughs> Maybe That's people will watch people it. Call it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get some views. Joe says, "This is my former YCC teammate. He can shut down." Alexander Dahl without effort. Mm. Oh yeah. Evan Hurley says anyone can do that. Andrew, can you speak on this? Um yeah, uh, is is Alexandre uh, Alexandra? I can't yes. remember. Uh, okay, yes. He uh did did he get the um the Callahan against Ottawa for the Breeze this year? Was that him? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe if you go to his Twitter, he might like because he's on um He's on truck and breeze. Yeah, is this him. is this Alexandre Fall? Yes. Okay. I don't know, man. He tweets too much. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. First throw layout block against Ottawa. Yep. Yeah, this dude's fucking sick. Yeah, I don't know, Joe. I mean, that is a hot take. I think it's a it's a bad take. Well, that's what that's what we asked. Sheesh. You know? Oh. <laughs> Okay, oh, it, yeah. it wasn't. It was almost a Callahan. That's right. All right, yeah. bad, take. Was, bad take. I think it's a bad take. It's a bad take. And then Evan Hurley with an even worse take. All right, and then we got Kevin with controversial calls should require a two minute boxing round. <laughs> Honestly, that would be way be more, more entertaining, despite their comments yeah. about club nationals. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be more entertaining than like a two minute like discussion. Yeah, I yeah. Think we should just make the AUDL more like the UFC. Yeah. yeah well then that's, that's where idea. we are we, do we do the pads or no? I, I mean I guess you take you take the pads off. It's like in, in NHL you take the helmet off, you take the gloves off. <laughs> yeah. Right. What if what if every team had like uh you don't want your players to get hurt. So you have like a like a mascot that you've trained to fight. And every time there's a contested call, you make the two mascots fight, and whoever uh, wins gets the call. <laughs> that's they, me up. And that's how. Like, that's how I get on Broadway. Fighting. I'm there. I'm there for that. <laughs> yeah, you just. And every team will have the designated fighter. Designated this guy. fighter. Grease line R line E. It. Grease. It's a Grease. great name. Jacob Geisberg. Um. Ban the hammer. Guy. Ban the hammer, he says. Reduce the stall to seven. Already a thing. This is about I guess this is about club. Yeah. Um agree on reduce the stall to seven. <laughs> Have to catch the two skin both end zones for it to count as one point. <laughs> oh. That's uh that's kind of stupid, Greece. <laughs> but I can't tell if he's hammer. I can't tell if he's ban, that, or not. ban the hammer is kind of fun. <laughs> ban the hammer. <laughs> we should put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> observers for club national should be paid are they not paid i didn't know that they weren't they probably so should be i guess yeah, they're I think it's all volunteers they absolutely well, should turn, be. turn them into refs and then pay them i get i get observers not being paid because they just have to stand there and then like get things wrong only only say things when yeah when asked and say it wrong T- tell but, you not to say the f word yeah <laughs> But turn them into referees and then pay them. I'm on board. But also, like in reality, if you're making people go out of their way for like hours on end, like pay them. Yeah, yeah. Teams pay like fat 
tournament if he used to go to national so you can you can chip some the the observer's way for sure mm. okay hold on well, go to the profile picture here because i feel like i recognize the meme. i think this is i believe this is my little sister yeah I think this <laughs> is your sister <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will it. say this this uh profile picture has changed sorry this profile picture has changed three times since this tweet was sent <laughs> right <laughs> i can tell you that but the the tweet from abby is oh, keep it my wife <laughs> keep it a no contact sport but let players get in fist fights like they do in hockey so yes. similar to the the boxing to settle calls yes basically the same thing yeah i mean let's let's do it what are we waiting for yeah fuck it. if you're not gonna have refs yeah at least fight about stuff yeah all right let's see any more that came in there were a couple Logan. of quote tweets but um I think someone can sky was... Kira yeah. or kayak logan can sky kayak no way and we have another uh bring refs into uh we had a couple on our Instagram um, that I can pull up real quick. Um, oh, yeah. I post on our Instagram story. Um, I won't. I guess it's like presumably anonymous, but also not because you're still telling us with your profile and we can see it. But OK, let's see. Um, oh, there's there's a new one since we. OK. Um, so we have. Cray Frank <laughs> ain't all wrong. Not okay. Sure. Um, we all need to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now this I agree with. <laughs> oh going toward, yeah, we're going yeah. towards the end of the pod as well. So, um, and then the last, the last one is um, Seattle Frisbee needs a reality check. Wow, that might be our spiciest one. Um. I don't know. What do you guys think about these? I'm stuck on we all need to stop. I think that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we should just end the I want to put that. I want to put that on a shirt. I mean, that would make <laughs> that would make Molly Brown happy, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so this is our last episode ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this oh, has been another episode of I'm Open with Joe and Ryan and Andrew. I'm open. I'm open. We need to stop.